Do you know who you're messing with? Do you know who you're messing with? We live? Are we? Are we going? Yeah, we are. Now we're live. Live. I don't have my glasses, so I can't really see a lot. Blind Dion today. Who cares? DC we're Sports. The, uh... Where are we? Yeah, we're 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 back in the. Yeah. You, you missed the unicorns this week. It's all right, guys. We're I, we promise we'll get you when all the wild creatures are out. Uh, before we start, PSA. If you encounter a wild bison or buffalo, leave them damn antelopes alone. I am tired of watching little Susie is getting flipped into the air by little buffaloes. Did you see the video? No. Okay. His reasoning is to his left in a blue cup. So. So, yeah. At least he didn't lead off about poles in a dude's ass. Yeah, well, yeah, that was a wild Pause. time. Uh, so what do we have today? New show, ready to go. Let's get it. All right, Pac-Man clearly hey. don't give a damn about what age he is. Hey. He, hey, be dude ass. I watched the fight. There was a. He was giving him like eight shots, and dude just did not know where it was coming from. I was concerned for that young man's health, and to be honest, he was what eight to ten years his hey. his one youth? time Thurman ain't no bitch. He's not, and he took a. He was he gave he gave Pacquiao some shots, but Pacquiao was laughing at him and still coming. This is the problem, man. When you got a dude mm -hmm. punching you in the face from every angle, yeah. and he forty, <laughs> and you was just talking shit about him having raptor arms, and right. he was raptor in your ass, and he laced you in the first round. Raptors really just winning quiet, in twenty nineteen. Just be quiet. But what I give Keith Thurman. He was a very, very gracious loser. As you should which be. Which would get him more fights. Because he ain't no punk. And he could have been that dude like, man, he got me with a shot. He was a very gracious loser, and I'll give it to him. He was he was very uh, cool in defeat. What did you think of the fight, if you saw it? Uh, yeah, I no, I mean, fight. so I saw the score card, and I saw the uh, that was a split decision in Pacquiao's favor. That and then should I saw, not have been a split decision. Right, you thought Pacquiao it should have been an unanimous. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, you knock him down first round. You establish that, hey, you know, I don't care. Shorter arms, more age. Bro, I'm still pound for pound, arguably the best fighter to have ever lived. Now, you know, Pacquiao, I mean, so what, what gets me, D, about Pacquiao is when I saw the Floyd fight with him, I saw a guy who I thought was throwing weak punches yeah. when – Maybe he was? He did have a shoulder tear in that fight. Okay, all which right. Everybody forgets. And, and then said that that was an excuse after they, they revealed it. He didn't it. really use it as an excuse because people revealed it. Mm -hmm. Manny Pacquiao is a stand-up dude. I've always liked him. He'll take his L's. My, my, my affinity for Floyd Mayweather, but I've always liked Manny Pacquiao. Uh, so I is there... I would love... To I still would want it. Everybody wants to see the fight now. You want the part two? Who doesn't? Do you want the if part two? If you saw two? the fight with Manny, you like, dude, Man Manny just beat a freaking undefeated champion. Yeah. That's 10 years younger. Why would you not want to see that? I could see if he, like, got his ass whooped or barely won. He mm -hmm. dominated that fight, bro. He took a few shots. But that was a unanimous decision. And can I say? We see that. Can I ask you one thing, or just bring up one point of why I would not be interested? Obviously, if it gets signed up and they have the fight, everybody's gonna watch We're gonna it. Watch we just, it, just bro. get over. We're all gonna watch it, right? But the reason why I think I have pushback about a part two, yep, is <laughs> because part one was boring as fuck. Like Floyd yeah. is a defensive fighter by nature. He's not going to let Pacquiao. Fan? Yeah, I'm a boxing it's fan, Pacquiao. and you have to. Pacquiao. Oh, Pacquiao. Yes. Pacquiao. Right. I enjoy. It. I'll I'll catch all the big ones. You know, if people are throwing okay. the thing, and I'll pay attention. So, do you think Floyd is a boring boxer? No, he, he is a beautiful. Okay. He is the best defensive 
boxer, which makes him arguably the best pound for pound boxer ever. He doesn't get hit. That's why what that's what made the fight boring. When he did make contact, it was with Pacquiao and you know shoulder injury or whatever. Mm -hmm. Floyd doesn't take big hits. No. That's his fight. Yeah. And if he Pacquiao did one against Shane, I remember that. I, I, did you see that? Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again. Did you see the Shane hit? No. Okay, you're gonna have to dub this. Yeah, in. we'll put this in. Yeah, uh, Shane buckled. That was the worst punch I've ever seen hmm. Floyd take. Brian Reed. Wow, long time no see. What's up, buddy? Hmm. Um, big, big fan of the show. What's up, um, Brian? Floyd caught one against Shane Mosley. I've never seen him buckle. I'll get you the video over. We'll put it in there now. Yeah. So uh, what is? I mean, so boom. So that was the only time I that's saw the only Floyd, instance I've ever yeah, seen him like where that. he got buckled. But um, at the end of the day, I want to see that fight right now. There's not a lot of options out here because dude lost. I don't even remember his name already, but he got his ass whooped mm. by a large Hispanic gentleman uh, in his own country. And Deontay Wilder should not fight him. Why would he? Mm. What is the point? So there's nothing really going on in boxing. Um, the the other guys are still either up and coming or nobody wants to pay to see them. Right. So what is the point? There's no real reason for Floyd to come out of retirement unless it's for Manny. Yeah. Like that's the only next time you're gonna see Floyd Mayweather, it's going to be through an obnoxious amount of millions. And it will probably Floyd only be a, Floyd was in the front row by the Right, of course. And then he tweets out oh. right after, like they yeah. They feed off of each other. Yeah. You're going to get a part it's like two. Ali and freaking um, Frazier. Frazier. Ali Foreman. Well, not Foreman. So. Shit out of the fight. Fight will be. <laughs> well, I'm going to be the shit out of George Foreman. <laughs> but, I ain't see it like when I was, you know, I ain't that old, but I mean, I saw the rumble in the jungle. I'm be the shit out of George. Yeah. Big George. He wasn't making no Foreman grills back then, but uh, what were you saying? They'll beat their, they'll both make record-breaking pur purses. More uh, than Pat, McGregor. Right. <laughs> Way more than McGregor. And we'll watch a fight in which Floyd knows his opponent. Yes. <laughs> especially do it fighting him again. Mm -hmm. This just not, you know, especially at this point in his career, there's no reason for Floyd to change what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change the style of fighter oh, he is. Hate. And it's just, you're going to have to really sink I into the beauty. Just look. like a lot of people don't like one nothing baseball games. Mm -hmm. A lot of I people love, love them because that's a pitcher's duel. Pitcher's duel. That's just, you you mowing cats to see down. Juice balls get thrown out in the river. You know, my whole thing is I would love to see the fight. Hope it happens. I would love to see Floyd fight a healthy Manny Pacquiao. Let's do it. What's next? Let's do it. Um, next up on our list, Mr. Odell Beckham came out with an interview. First, before we dive into this, he <coughs> did come out today. GQ, right? Yep, GQ interview. And said that that interview was conducted two months ago, just after he got traded from the Giants. So, everything he said was a little raw emotion at the time. Yes, Things he touched on, though, hmm, weird segue, uh -huh. was his sexuality. Touched on. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, he said in what I would agree with rightfully so that he just finds the humorous people that think that you know he might be homosexual or might be gay he said look I have no problem with anybody's sexuality you love who you love people accuse me of it it doesn't bother me in fact I might feed into it a little bit more just to like when someone says you give him an ultimatum Odell said he likes to go the other way mm. that's that's out of his words how that you take that how you interpret that's up to you he is, he seems to me straight in his sexuality, not, you know, no pun intended, but comfortable in his sexuality. And that's what, you know, how he Do likes to say that, though, if he wasn't an uh, uh, avid dancer and had because he cut it, he uh, got rid of it. Yeah. Uh, he got rid of the blonde hair, but he had blonde hair. Or is it just. I mean, it's all of say. it, right? Yeah. He, he's skinny jeans, dancing, emotional. Blonde hair, you know, a uh, little bit. He's a wide receiver, so you get the deep, the name Diva. Where do you think the term Diva comes from? Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> like, and so by in nature, wide receivers are inherently Divas, and he is just the modern NFL Diva. That's just his style. And if that's how he gets down, that's how he gets down. Other things he talked about, D, um, 
was his, uh, you know, his preference. People also accused him of only liking the white milk. He said, I love all women's, he should. all of them, as he should. No problem there. Um, so, no, Odell Beckham is not just exclusive to the 2%, all right? Finally, football business that he talked I about. OBJ going to get beat by a kicker in here. <laughs> See? <laughs> Uh, football. Man, what he did say, which was interesting to me, which I wanted to bring up, is he felt disrespected mm-hmm. by the Giants because he feels like without him, they would not have been prime time. Do you agree? I definitely agree. I just want to know why he brought it up. The way that the Giants said goodbye to Odell after giving him the largest contract for that position in NFL history. And then to also come out and say this past offseason, no, we are not trading Odell. We didn't sign him to trade. Right. We didn't sign him to trade him was the exact quote. Mm -hmm. And then for you to trade him, and even though it's a great situation for him and he'll have a chance to compete for a playoff spot, you shipped him off from New York to Cleveland. Do you think that? I think this is a branding comment. Do you think that he was traded because they expected him to change with the contract? Like, what was their point? Smart. Me thinking the Giants front office is smart. I would say that they maximized and guaranteed his long-term commitment to another team by signing him to that. Mm -hmm. Right? Literally the opposite of what he said. Like, you literally signed him to trade him. So now that that those years are with another team and he can't just leave. (laughs) Right? He got his bag just with someone else. Could, do you see him signing with Cleveland free agency? Jarvis Landry and, uh, and him are boys. They tight. But I don't know. Odell's a big brand guy, which is guy. why I think he said he felt disrespected. Because as much as the New York Giants are a premier brand in the it's NFL, TDS. you know, they are, you know, New York. Not much five, more to say. Wins or less. You know? And for them to be as awful as they were, but after that catch... They hitting all the primetime games because you need to see big brands in prime time if they have something. Uh, we know, as Lakers fans, we watched the Lakers be last place teams in the Pacific Division still play on Christmas Day. And Kobe was what? Please. It didn't matter. It Kobe did playing. Okay. You have prime time Kobe's games. Playing. All right. So it's a combination. Odell, you're right. It's also the market. He just threw it out there. It's, it's the truth, and I'm looking forward to the season to see what he does. I will say this. Not on the Dolphins. Odell on the Dolphins. Doug, you're still a small market team. You're probably not going to make it every Sunday. Um, you know, Odell on Cleveland, without all those other big names on there, Odell, you're probably not getting the, the primetime games. You know what I'm saying, bro? Odell in Chicago. Right. Odell in Chicago. All right. Now you... You LA? brought it center. Let's get it. L.A. Like Big three, baby. I say it all the time. NFL and NBA want Chicago, mm-hmm. New York, and L.A. somewhere in their playoff seats. So, Always. What do we got next? Yeah, what do we got next? So uh, we're going to turn this baby down Jonas. just a notch um, and talk about financial health. <laughs> this segment is sponsored by Please Don't Go Broke While Still Considered Rich. While you're the best running back in the league. Adrian Peterson reportedly is in debt right now. This oh, is the uh, is. this is the same Adrian Peterson that dominated the league and collected some of the biggest bags for running back in NFL history, earned over well over eighty million in contract money. And it came down to the same thing that's always reported by these athletes, mm. unfortunately. I trusted Ignorance. the wrong people. Ignorance. What do you make of that? What, what do I you... just, I don't understand how you get so much income. Mm. First of all, you're in, New, you're in, you're in uh, Minnesota. Is it Minnesota. What the hell are you spending in Minnesota? What's going on up there? What's going okay. on? I just don't understand how you could you could just blow jag off millions of dollars like that per year per, like, per year. I'm not saying this as somebody. I just don't get it. Excuse me. Let me know if I'm wrong. 
But if you're making 50, 60, 70, 80 million, could you look up how much exactly he lost? Mm -hmm. I just don't get how that's possible. He, he, who are you giving your put? Who are you putting your money? I mean, I understand as an NFL star, NBA star, you're not depositing your checks in the chase. You do have to have some semblance of a financial advisor, but come on, man. Yeah. I'm having every access and alarm where somebody is touching my money. Mm -hmm. Now he got to pay back this person and that person. And he really just playing to, to do what? He ain't going to get that type of money no more. So I just don't understand how you get to that point where you're the best in a league, bro. Yep. Adrian you Peterson that money. reportedly... So the details of how much he is in debt is not out yet. How much has he made in his career? Adrian. I want to see how much he lost. Because if you're in debt, that means you lost everything you made. Right. Right. Or you're not paying shit you owe. Yes. Right. Um, Adrian Peterson career earnings. But in the article, it talks about how um, how he is being sued by a lender for $5.2 million. Lenders. Um, he's being sued by another um, car company for two point eight million dollars. How, how you how you own two point eight to a to a, a dealership? What you driving a, tr a, a fucking tank? I just want to understand that. Did he play for the Saints? Oh yeah, yeah. So because Brian has a question about the Saints, maybe you can answer it. Because I'm not a Saints fan. Fuck the Saints, Brian. You know that Bears all the way. Mm hmm. I mean. The, that what do you want to call that play? The most blatant pass interference call in NFL history. If the Saints are a stable franchise and Sean Obviously, Payton's yeah. a Hall of Fame coach, if he is, and if Drew Brees is a Hall of Fame QB, if waters off the Ducks back, right? They should bounce back. If this is what derailed their years of success, you know, the Vikings. Who who the so that's back to back years actually. Yeah. yeah. Alright. That might be a point. That that might be a little heavy to lose how you did to Minnesota two years ago and then lose how you did to the Ram who the fuck did was that but it was a tough one. The pass interference call yeah. last year. Alright, you might I might get a little depressed. Um oh my god. Adrian Peterson made over a hundred million dollars in his career but owes millions in debt. Put a bow on this little topic with AP in financial um, security. As in dumbass. He's going to file for bankruptcy fairly soon so he can at least keep some of his assets, assets right? Um, but he's... the Where he could have been is... I don't, it's I sad just, to think about. It's, um, it's frustrating that we have to discuss it. But it's news, and that's our job. But come on, man. Like, really? Alex Rodriguez came out with a show recently on CNBC, it. right? And Talking to Joe Smith. Episode. I don't yeah, know well, why. That's a great show. We're just going to pilot it, see how yeah, people see like how it. people like it. And then we'll, we'll shoot some more. Because, you know, A-Rod. He broke. He, he, A-Rod is not. A-Rod he, He's like, how much y'all paying me per episode? Yeah. And they're like, all right, maybe we'll just do this on the episode by episode. Help Joe out. But that's it, because I'm good with uh, baseball tonight and on ESPN and Fox for the playoffs. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to, uh, to my wife yeah. to be J-Lo. So I'm good. He but was I uh, my guy Joe out. show was uh, Joe Smith. got that bag, bro. Former that's number one guy. pick. He, he uh shit, man. He blew through all of his money as well, Who? right? Uh, Joe Smith. Oh, uh, yeah. I say. What? And uh, I'm just giving the background of the show. And A Rod came up to him and was like, "All right, let's uh, let's figure this out." Yeah, you Joe know, Joe Smith, former Maryland Turpin, number one pick overall, is a basketball instructional guy for kids. Yeah, and he has to basically track down people for his money. That's what Joe Smith's doing. That's what about. happens when you don't take care of how good bro. paying NBA checks. Joe Smith got two two max at that time deals. He had to. Didn't he? Joe Smith, you know, Joe Smith just a tad, tad. When he came in, he was a tad. He was washed when I started actually paying attention to who the fuck Joe Smith. Oh, I remember a Cleveland man. Joe Smith. I remember a Hawks he Joe Smith. One. I don't remember no Hawks. I remember a Lakers. Man, I, wow. Yeah. yeah. Joe Smith, um, 
you just make sure you keep your ducks in a row now that a rods uh helped you out brother um that's a that's a shame just seeing these dudes burn through these this money but i mean some people just you know guys uh also if we could provide any more uh you know financial advice on the ec sports show is uh stop hiring family members to manage your money unless you're Kawhi leonard unless you're Kawhi leonard and i don't that's not even yeah, that's important not if they are man right now they managing they management of Kawhi leonard but Kawhi could still probably have like you know somebody off to say hey in in you know cash in cash out you watch this like a hawk we saw it with lonzo man we saw it with the ball brand and how they got screwed by a snake so close to them Father, bro. these snakes they're there bro they regardless love to take of, advantage regardless of what you're gonna pay them regardless yeah. of what they tell you them having access to that type of money all oh, he won't see it. He, he won't notice it. he won't notice 50k and then he won't notice 75. Once and you don't say nothing. And then they just keep doing it. That's what a thief does, man. So it's it's tough because real quick, while we're on basketball, right quick, yep. I saw today that we were talking about Dwight Howard. The guy writing the article, mm -hmm. I believe it was for Fox, but don't quote me on that, said Dwight Howard is past his prime. Although he's guaranteed to be a Hall of Famer. I don't want to have that talk, man. I don't want to have that talk because you don't want to know he's my guaranteed answer. guaranteed to be a Hall of Famer. Now, guaranteed is this, it's, that's, uh, that's, that's a little, that's a little put, aggressive. How did he put it? He said, he's for sure a Hall of Famer. I was like, I like Dwight. But uh, uh, he's sure to be a Hall that's that's a strong statement. So I would say Dwight's a uh, uh, surefire Hall of Famer if he had won a ring. He went to the chip. He went to the but, chip and then got sat his ass back down. Right. But we all know who they were playing. Hito Turkey, Lou Rashad Lewis. You know. We all know JJ Redick, uh, Jameer Nelson. We all know who they were. Playing. Sorry about your boys. We had we had bigger Two, shit to four. do. So I mean. Two, four. I don't know, man. What do you think? Dwight is the all-time leading rebounder in, and in block shots in Magic history. Okay. Yeah, right? I mean, like, so where? how much does that matter to you that he leads in um, rebounds, blocks? He's not points. Uh -huh. He's not a score. He's – there was what? He won two Defensive Player of the Year awards? I believe Right, he was probably at yeah. least a four-time. On one point, he was the best, best player in the league. Right, center. There's a reason why the Lakers traded for him at that time. It's just those back issues. I hate Dwight Howard, Laker. Oh yeah, well that's when it was. Remember, show everybody hates Chris. That was everybody hates Dwight after that season because Kobe tore his Achilles that year too. Then soft. he left. You soft. That next year though, that was pretty entertaining. Yeah, uh, Kobe and Dwight, but like. That's All right, you say it first. Do you think he's a Hall of Famer? No. no. I just, I don't. That's just, I don't. That's just, that's big time. Hall of Fame? Mm. USA Today on March 23rd, 2018, last year, said why Dwight Howard is a lock for the Hall of Fame. In his Orlando days, I would have said that. Eight all-star appearances, average for his career, 17 points, 12.6 rebounds, two blocks, one steal, 58.3 field goal percentage. You know, that puts him, his win share is better than Elvis Hayes. Ooh. Uh, Hall of Fame uh, center. Okay. Um, not really sure why they picked out him. He ranks uh, in total win share for his career right now. Okay, this puts it in perspective. Dwight Howard is six all-time for centers in total win share. Okay. The only people better than him are Hakeem, David Robinson, Shaq, Tim Duncan, Kareem. All Hall of Famer. Now, you start looking at the people below him. Elvis Hayes, who, if you didn't hear my co-host say, who he played in the 60s, 1969, 70s, right? You know, um, Nate Thurman, 
I know Nathan. And then we got some other current players, Anthony Davis and Joel Embiid. Okay. So what I think now is going to happen is if Anthony Davis wins a chip and Joel Embiid goes to the finals sometime soon and their win share shoots right up and now it's even uh, close to surpassing Dwight. I mean, Chris Webber's a Hall of Famer. So yeah, right. I I mean, at that standpoint, then you can't think of it like the NFL Hall of Fame, and especially not the MLB Hall of Fame, because there ain't no way in hell Uh -uh. Dwight Howard would be an MLB Hall of Famer. Like they, they They even make Ken Griffey unanimous. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so I mean, and and Dwight has had some coach coaching issues, teammate issues, obviously, and it's like sixteen. What what kept To out for so long? His reputation. Yeah. Right? T.O.'s numbers, there was no question. The Washington GM said he that was the fastest trade he ever made in his life, in his career. It was the Dwight Howard trade. So they did not Out of that. there? Yeah. See? I read that today. So it's tough, man. I mean, like I said, he's a, for what I met, and I always talk about my meeting, mm-hmm. my one time, two minutes of fame with him. Cool dude, very nice. And then you um, see him. You see him on Wilding Out. Yeah. You see he has a personality. Yeah, He's just picture with him. You want to show that? Yeah, we'll get the picture That's up. Us. Look at them. No. Um, see. He's just. I mean, he's just a nice dude. Kobe didn't rock with him because he was a little too immature. Kobe didn't like him because he didn't approach the game the way yeah. Kobe thinks every person should approach a game. That's a militaristic style. You know, Dwight just wanted to have fun. And kind of like Shaq. And, right, and in being Shaq Mr. Hates fun him. Guy and Mr. Superman, big guys don't want to be, Shaq they either want to be the scariest person in the world, DeMarcus Cousins, um, Zach Randolph, you know, bullies, or they want to be big teddy bears that like to crack jokes and have fun. Shaq, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, um, Dwight. Names, you're almost done with the show. We got to get our last Oh, my God. Here. All right, quick little rapid fire. We're going to go back and forth. You make your case right now. Who is the best Shit talker. You said in sports. In sports. All right. I'm going to go with my first Twitter post and go Bean. Mm. If you don't know who that is, that's Kobe Bean. You soft. Kobe talked a lot of shit in back then. Yeah. You? I'm probably either going to go with uh, Gary Payton okay. or my sleeper pick, but it's not too much really a sleeper. I think it's got to be Sheed, man. Only because he has the quote that has stuck in basketball more than any other quote as far as shit talking. What is that? Ball don't lie. Wow. That's a Sheed Wallace quote. Wow. You don't even have to watch a game with Sheed Wallace. You go to your local YMCA, two people going at it. Yeah. Somebody goes up to the line, they need to shoot a free throw or shoot for ball, right? And then they they clank it. What the other person say? Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. All right. I got a uh, off the... Tough one. Yeah. Connor McGregor. Hmm. That's that's real. That's now that's somebody who should be a great shit talker. Sales fights. Better than Floyd. I think he's probably he's way better. He's second better favorite Floyd. shit talker in all of Floyd's fighting. Sales fights. Let me not disrespect Floyd. But uh Connor McGregor's up there. But like talking shit, like how much can Floyd really, you know, like what with vocabulary, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, True. so Muhammad Ali, I was gonna say Connor McGregor greatest of all time. You know, they're they're high up. You don't there. even have to be around when he was around. There's so much video on Muhammad. It's he's the all time. Uh but he backed that he was just a entertainer. Last one, real quick, Bobby Knight. Huh? I mean, he was just shit talking to his players. Oh, okay. and like to actually, the point of choking and and like backing it up. Yeah, and choking. Bobby Knight's my my Great. sleeper pick. Um, All right, so um, I mean, that's the show. That's the show. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, all of the guys going to camp. Uh, he's going to camp in Brink's trucks. Uh, with with Duval uh, uh, Davis. Uh, but uh, that means the football starting, which means we have to get fantasy underway so Here i'll be go. sending out an email Ooh. soon it is this week 2005 um it's time to go it's time to play uh we doing that draft uh live oh yeah 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 so, we'll have a video um, tape condensed to we're doing it for the show we'll do one week of show that's just our draft recap yeah. we'll see you guys next week we got some good things coming up with some uh, special guests yes sir so stay tuned ec sports peace